in the world, at least traditionally. And they are the Middle East, which is Israel, Palestine, uh, South Asia, which is India, Pakistan, Kashmir, and Far East, which is North and South Korea. Now, in all these three zones of tension, action is being taken to bring youth together. In, you have, for example, Seeds of Peace, which is a major project in Israel, Palestine. You have track two diplomacy for youth between India, Pakistan, and you have similar contacts in Panmunjom between North and South Korea. So an effort is being made to, uh, to, to uh, create contacts and to create better uh, understanding between the populations in these zones of tension. I do not know whether we will succeed or not, because the tensions are because of important divisions in disputes. Some of those disputes are territorial, some of those disputes are more than territorial. And perhaps youth may not be able to bridge the divide unless we can find solutions to the disputes themselves. But an effort is being made in what are called the confidence building measures in the hope that they may help identify some solutions to the disputes themselves. But it's a difficult task and we are worried about it at the United Nations. We have time for a quick question from uh, uh, Tinek. Good morning, Mr. Ambassador. Um, my question is, earlier you guys were talking about the logistical advantage that Americans have to the United Nations. We also said that the American youth is a minority at the youth conferences. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's a cultural issue? Do you think it's a, the American youth are more concerned with other things? Or what, what do you think it is? Well, we have had eight years uh, in the past of a lack of respect for what the United Nations could bring to us, quite honestly. Uh, I have spoken as a member of the National Council for the United Nations Association in the United States and abroad. Perhaps those in emerging countries around the world see the tangible benefits better of the United Nations because whatever is gathered in terms of resources in the United Nations is expended in countries that are developing. So they actually get to see the rebuilding, the rice, the military who protect them more than we do in the developed world where we're asked to give and we don't often see the results of that giving. Uh, we also know we live in a very dysfunctional world so we give and give and it seems like the world doesn't get better and we have some politicians who believe that America Americans are exceptional and therefore we don't see the need to collaborate. So there are many things that work against um, a, a great feeling for the UN amongst our citizenry throughout the, the entire country. There are times when I speak in the developed world and I'm treated like Bono, you know, I'm really treated like a rock star. Uh, I spoke in 2006 in Kansas and some man said to me, you know, you're very passionate Mr. Sharada, but um, our president is conversant with Jesus. And I had to say, you know, when you, when you talk to Jesus, that's called prayer. When Jesus talks to you, that's called schizophrenia. And he said, the people you meet when you don't have a gun. So there, you know, there are a lot of issues <laughs> that are local to our own country. But I do think that um, uh, civil society has been very helpful now in writing that. Uh, we just saw a report from Harvard that young people 25 years old uh, trust the United Nations to uh, make the world a better place. And in 2007, when they took that poll, uh, we were starting to see that more young people thought the UN should be handling global issues rather than uh, the United States uh, unilaterally. So I do think that it is changing. Uh, we're out of time, but before I ask Dr. Murphy to close this session from her end, I would like to congratulate uh, Professor Rafaelides and uh, his students at uh, TNEC, uh, Professor Hunter and his students at uh, Lehigh, and this extraordinary director uh, that we have in Vancouver uh, for bringing together uh, the first entry of Vancouver 
into the video conference program of the UN Pathways of Fairly Dickinson. Over to Dr. Murphy to close this session from her end. Thank you very much, Ambassador Kamal. I too would like to thank Vancouver for joining us today. It was a real pleasure to have that part of our family with us now. Um, I also want to thank um, Bill Hunter for bringing in Lehigh again. We're very close friends and we appreciate this relationship. And of course, I applaud uh, Professor Rafalides for the great work he's doing with the Global Scholars there. Particularly, I'd like to say thank you to our friend, uh, Patrick Sharata. We invited Patrick to speak to you because it is important that our young people understand the critical role that they play now, not only in the United Nations, but throughout the world. And Ambassador Kamal, as always, you did an extraordinary job in highlighting the issues and awakening all of us to the importance of the role of, of youth in the United Nations. Uh, before we close, I would like to ask you if you could just say a few words about our next video conference. This is going to be an exceptional video conference uh, that's coming up on April the 13th with the chef de cabinet of the Secretary General. Uh, yes, that next video conference, uh, which is going to be, as you rightly say, uh, I'm trying to check the exact date. Yes, it is the 13th of April. Uh, same time, it's on a Tuesday morning. It's a conference on the future of the United Nations. In other words, the problems and prospects, not just of the United Nations as an organization, but the United Nations as a concept of multilateralism in a globalizing world. And uh, our distinguished panelist will be uh, the chef de cabinet to the Secretary General, the former ambassador of India, and a very dear and close friend, Ambassador Nambiar. And uh, we hope to be able to dissect the problems of multilateralism and to seek advice, as I said, from all of you in, in identifying the COVADIS, the way forward for multilateralism through the United Nations. That being said, I would like to, on your behalf and mine, thank Mr. Shirata for taking time thank out you so much, Ambassador. to join us today Pleasure. and for a fabulous session uh, in favor of uh, the under 30 youth. We'll see all of you Until on April 13th. Look forward. Until then, goodbye. Bye-bye now. Bye.